If you enjoy this program, please like and subscribe. The reason why the teaching of the church are untrue is because they're incompatible with Tanakh, not because of any of this stuff. Hey, Rabbi. Hey, William. This is Steve calling from New Jersey. And um, yeah, my, my question does kind of dovetail off of your uh, your answer of the last question. Um, I was going to ask about the Gospels of Matthew and Luke. Um, so as you stated, uh, the, ma- the majority of scholars today are fairly certain that the authors composed their Gospels independently of one another, while also drawing from the same saying source. Uh, this, of course, being the source that scholars call Q. And my question, Rabbi, is um, what do you find personally convincing about the arguments in favor of the existence of Q? Or to put it another way, why is it less likely in your personal estimation that the author of Matthew, for example, had access to Luke's gospel and reworked the so-called Q material in a similar fashion to how the material from Mark's gospel was reworked? Um, Just one other really quick point. As I understand it, the reason why scholars kind of have to date Matthew and Luke around the same year is because if they're not dated to around the same time, then the likelihood of interdependence, like, increases. So I, I was just, I just wanted to ask about your personal level of confidence about the existence of Q and non-interdependence of Matthew and Luke. That's a great question. So why am I convinced there is a source that contains less than 300 passages that both Matthew and Luke have in common but are absent from the book of Mark because they obviously were copying from the same source that Mark didn't have access to? That's why I think it's it's extremely likely. What would be the likelihood of Matthew and Luke just coming up with the exact same material that doesn't appear anywhere in the book of Mark. The nature of the Q material is different. It's Jesus the teacher versus Mark, Jesus the miracle worker. That's strikingly different. So that's why Q is so intriguing. Why not say that Matthew copied Luke or Luke copied Matthew There are many answers to this, but one of them is obvious, and that's the the infancy narrative. Those striking four chapters, two in Matthew, two in Luke, that are so different that it's inconceivable that Matthew saw Luke's work or Luke saw Matthew's work. Rather, they're copying from sources. Two of them are in common, Mark and Q. What is attractive about um, Luke copying from Matthew or Matthew copying from Luke is you remove one hypothesis. That's attractive. We have to just bear in mind one huge... um, The reason why the teachings of the church are untrue is because they're incompatible with Tanakh, not because of any of this stuff. I mean, what would happen if there was only one gospel? Only one made. There were there were more gospels than four. A lot of them were thrown out as heretical. So it, it wouldn't make a difference. But the key is that it does remove a, a hypothesis, which is always attractive. The issue is that the the virgin birth narrative is so dramatically different. Now there's reason to believe that Luke is a little later than Matthew. There's a whole bunch of reasons to think so. Luke is correcting, okay. I'm not sure if it's Luke himself, but Luke seems to be more developed. His writing style is more developed. And some at some stage, the whoever edits Luke is correcting Matthew. I can't say the original writer did this, but let me give you an an example of this. Let's take uh, Matthew 23, verse 35. So Matthew 23, that's a Q source. In it, Jesus, what I told you earlier, teaching. The Pharisees sit in the seat of Moses. 
what they tell you follow, but the hypocrites and vipers, and it then is a flamethrower. Okay. And then comes the charge, and the charge is that they're responsible for all the innocent blood shed. And I'm going to bracket in the Bible from the righteous blood of Abel until that of Zechariah, the son of Barachiah, okay? Very famous. So Abel is the first person to be murdered in the Bible. The Jews, they're responsible for everything, okay? I don't really know how I ever survived growing up in, in, in a city that I think was everybody who wasn't Jewish was definitely Christian. I never, I don't recall uh, ever meeting an atheist, you know, 50 years ago in Brooklyn. They were all Christians. I imagine you're, you're reading this, you're taught this in Catholic school. There was one Catholic church in Brooklyn called Holy Ghost. I think it's still there on 17th Avenue and what is it, like 45th Street, 46th Street? And they had a school, they had a school the Holy Ghost School, all the Christian kids would go, oh, do they hate us? Oh, do they hate us? I'm sure it's still there. They must bust them in. Oh, they hated us. And the chief charge was that we were Christ killers. We killed Jesus. It was so crazy. You know, I, I know I'm breaking away here. I apologize, but I want to forget this. You know, they wore special uniforms. The girls wore a special skirt, a special shirt. And the, the girls would... As I'm a little boy. You could see they were hiking their skirt up. They were whatever kids do, right? So they were doing all sorts of things they shouldn't be doing, which is against what the Catholic Church taught. But when it came to Jews killing Jews, they get very, very religious. You know, it's like the 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 story of the the story of you know I don't believe in Jesus, but I know you killed him. Okay. Getting back. So as it turns out, this passage of Matthew 23, 35, it contains an error, a bold error, and that is there are many people with the name Zechariah, Zechariah in Tanakh. There are a whole bunch of people there. The most famous one is the one you know, and that's the author of the book of Zechariah. Okay? And he is Zechariah, the son of Berechiah. He isn't executed. He isn't. He isn't murdered by the, at the altar by the in the temple. He wasn't. There was another guy who was who really comes in very late. He's at the at the end of the game, and it's it's Zechariah ben Yehoiada, a different person, like Zechariah altogether. Now this is just a mistake. There's and this is very important. Matthew just contains an error. I cannot think of any advantage for Matthew to put Z the author of the book of Zechariah there instead of the priest who's killed. And this error, people make this mistake. In fact, there's a Targum where I don't know who made the mistake. There's some Aramaic translation where I don't know if it was the original author, or probably not, but some scribe along the way it, it wound up in the printing. So that's what happened with Matthew, is there's just an error. Wrong guy. I can't think of a nefarious reason why this would have been done. But this verse, remember what I told you, this is a Q source. So therefore it appears in Luke. Where does it appear in Luke? It's in Luke chapter 11, verse 51. Luke changes it. We're in Luke 11, 51. It's only Zechariah, Zechariah, but doesn't say the son of Berechiah. That's a correction. See? That's an editing of Matthew. That's a very sharp disagreement. There are many other reasons to think that Luke is, is a more developed gospel. You have two different traditions that, that emerge independently, and they just don't know about each other. There are some people who, for a wide range of reasons, date Luke later than um, later than Matthew. Some of them even date him in the second century. There are people like that. Anyways, thank you for your question. If you enjoyed this program, please like and subscribe. I don't know love. 
אשר מלך וטרם כל יציר נברא לעת נעשה בחפצו כל אזי מלך אזי מלך שמו נקרא ואחרי כפלות הכל לבדו ימלוך נורא